we want to welcome William McGinnis uh, to the Haight-Ashbury Oral History Project and um, your friends call you Bill. Yep. Okay, well tell me a little about yourself, like um, uh, where were you born? I was born in Wairika, California, which is about 350 miles north of San Francisco. It's right on the northern border, maybe 25 miles south. In 1938. Is that too loud? Yeah. Then maybe we'll lower it a little bit. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So you're a California native? Yes. And your parents' names? Uh, my father's name was Bill, just like mine. Sure. Sure. And my mother's name was Elma Emma Bartlett. Did, I think you said you had a photo of your father? Yeah. I'd love to see him. This was taken in 1948, approximately. Yeah. I'm guessing. He was, um, he was chief engineer of a radio station. He's also an announcer. He's also your what? He was, an, he was also an announcer. An announcer as well. Yeah, so he, well, he did everything. You know? You're Bill McGinnis <laughs> the second. He's the Bill second, McGinnis yeah. the first. Oh, it's an amazing photo uh, of inside a radio station around what year? It must have been around 1948. Around 1948. Uh, Wonderful. Yeah, I was 10 or 11. So you, so you grew up with your father in the industry somewhat already? Yes, yes. So what, is your, what was your mother's name? My mother's name was Elma, uh, and she had studied voice. She was uh, uh, did a lot of light, light opera, that sort of thing. Did and you bring a, a photo of your mother? Yeah. Okay, let's put that one down. She, this was taken probably Seven months before I was born. Wow. And, uh, what year were you born? Born 1938. Okay. And this is stamped on the back April 27, 1938. She's right before she got pregnant, or she was maybe a little pregnant? Just before, or. Right. She might have been pregnant. She's a beautiful lady. Beautiful lady. And her name again? Her name was Elma. Elma. Elma, Emma Bartlett. She was born in Xenia, Ohio. Beautiful. Uh, Actually, she probably wasn't born in Zenia. Probably on, it was, she was on a farm, and uh, not many hospitals around. Here. On a farm, and then your parents, and that was where? In, uh, where was she born? Zenia, Ohio. Oh, is that? Oh, Ohio. Okay. Um, My father was born in Portland. Oregon. Hey, Bill, I think we need to lower that just a touch. Okay. So our our our, cat, our microphones are very sensitive. They'll pick it up. Um, I would like to know if you brought any other family photos with you. I brought uh, some that are much, oops, much later. Um, much later. Yeah. Uh, this is my, well, you, this, there's one of my mother and father, and then there's one of all but, that's here. Yeah, let's look at all those and, and uh, yeah, this is, um, We'll try to, if you hold it still, we get a close-up on this and you can explain well, to actually, us. Actually, that's my mother and me, my daughter, and my wife. Wow, so which what's your wife's name? That's Ruth. And your daughter? And Sarah. And you? And me. And your mom, Elma? Elma, yeah. Beautiful. And this one is my mother and father. Wonderful. And it must be 1988. Where were know. they living at that time? That was in Wairika. Okay. That's wonderful. And for how long did your father stay in some some way connected to radio or music or announcing? Or well, he, he retired. He re, he didn't retire. He bought a um, a radio repair shop, radio television re sure. repair shop. Actually, before there was television in Wairika. Wow. And. Uh, Got involved in cable early on, early in the early days of cable. We had we were in the mountains and we couldn't get television, so he brought television into town, Amazing. wired up to town for, for television. So he he was essentially in the technical end, uh, technical management end of the entertainment business for, for all his life. Fantastic. Uh, Fantastic. Any other family photos to bring with you? Uh, there was one that was taken, this was taken, I think, uh, taken during the war. Uh-huh. World War One, World War Two. 
<laughs> World War II is there. Right. Uh, this was. Um, oh, wonderful. This was my mother and her cousin Willard. My father is on the left side of the screen, and her, my mother's cousin Willard there is on the left side of the screen. And to this day, I don't know his last name. Probably no, no Bartlett problem. or Ford. Right. No problem. I, I, and then this <laughs> other one you brought? And the other one is my wife and myself sometime about 1963. That's amazing. Just after we were married. That's amazing. It's a rare photo without a beard. <laughs> well, I have a moustache, but... You have a moustache. I was still in the reserves and the National Guard and sure. all that. It's right before you came back to the Hague? Uh, I, a couple of years, or actually, were you living in? I was. I had come back. I think I'd started working at the San Francisco Tate Music Center about that time, which was on the Visadero Street. Right. Uh, the Visadero and Page. So, oh wow! So it was right just, in the neighborhood. Just down there. Yeah, right down the street. Right down the street there. That's around 1963, 64, right in there. 64. 64. Pretty, pretty close. Um, this is probably, that's probably 63, 64. I, Did you ever have long hair? Did you let your hair grow? Oh yeah. Through the next few years? Well, unfortunately, uh, the commanding officer of my unit right, didn't, still in the didn't approve of... Sure. <laughs> he, okay. didn't mind, he didn't mind the mustache for some reason because he said it made me look like a German field officer. So okay. That was okay. That was okay. <laughs> Okay, so that, that's the last. Do you have one more? That's a family. Uh, no, I think that's that's just about it. For the family, that's wonderful. I do have a picture though of this band that's playing. The one that's playing right now. Yeah. And we can make that a little bit louder. The uh, audio. Let's listen. To Except the for the girl singer, I realize she's not in the picture. She left the band. Oh. Went back to New York or something. Okay, we want to lower the sound just a little. Okay, what, Bill, what was the name of this band? It's called A Gentle Dance. Okay, and starting with the guy in the black hat? The guy in the black hat is Bill McGinnis. That's you. He's the drummer. Yes. <laughs> the fellow down in front with the brown hat is Steve Mills. Steve Mills. Uh, lead singer and rhythm guitar. Mike Tassoni is a fellow with the long hair in the back uh, with um, the rather cherubic face. Yes. <laughs> he was the youngest. I was the oldest. But, uh, I think when that picture was taken, I was just past the age of being trusted. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was 30 at that time. Uh, and what did he do in the band? Oh, um, he was the bass player. And then the and, gentleman uh, on the corner with the love beads? And that's David Ayala. He was also a singer, and uh, so Mike was the only one that didn't sing. We tried to get him to sing, he never would. And then there was another girl singer in the band. There was that's a girl singer. Her name was uh, Christina Joy, and she's still around. Yeah. And amazingly enough, all these people are still alive. That's pretty uh, good. Mike Tassoni went back to Tennessee with Steve Gaskin, and uh, Steve Mills is probably some place floating around in the Pacific on, on a boat. Right. <laughs> About year, what year was this photo, would you say, what, approximately? Uh, this was... Bring, bring us to the right decade, and then we'll sort of see... This problems. was 68, 69. 68, 69. 68 or 69, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Wonderful. And again, the name of the band was? A Gentle Dance. Gentle Dance, okay. And my tape just went on the floor. Okay, we, we will get it <laughs> this, for you. I, I brought this because I was living in the Haight-Ashbury in 1962 at 704 Ashbury. Wonderful. And I had a wonderful garret. <laughs> and that was my view. Oh, that's wonderful. Out the window of the garret. That's wonderful. I was taking a course in, uh, just a survey course in... Uh, sure. In arts, sure. Because I had to take something, some, sure. some elective, and uh, it was a great course. And the instructor said, "Look, um, just go home, look out your window, and, and paint what you see." Now, 
and that's what I saw. That's and wonderful. The sun was sort of going down. So that's the view down. from your house, and the and address you I, lived at was, again? 704 uh, Ashbury. Oh, 704 Ashbury. Yeah. That's and amazing. And then 1962. That was between what streets, do you remember? It was just up past, well, The Panhandle? Well, no, Waller. No, Waller, okay. It was right so, off of Waller. Gotcha. I should go up the hill. It was... It was wonderful. Well, Grateful Dead was at 710, I think, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. And uh, do you still paint once in a while? Or are you artistic at all? Oh, once in a while. Once in a while. Yeah, I get an urge to throw paint at paper. That's, that's wonderful. Um, I, if you were to be remembered in the future when your this tape is being viewed, um, you, if you were... If you were being, if you were um, in the future uh, being remembered for your music, did you consider your, do you play more than one instrument? Uh, what instruments do you play? No, I, I, in public I play drums, that's it. And yes. sing a little bit. And yes. I, I have in the past played clarinet, saxophone, flute. Although uh, I haven't done that in probably 40 years. Right. <laughs> Too bad we didn't have one for you. <laughs> yeah, that'd have been, oh, you'd love that. <laughs> and if somebody somebody asks, what's the spectrum of the music you play? What kind of music have you played in your life and in, in the I past, think, in the early days, in the middle? And what kind of music yeah. are you playing now? Well, I, I play just about everything that I can think of. Uh, Played classical music. I studied classical music, of course. I played with the Oakland Symphony, played with the San Francisco Symphony, played with, um, uh, well, actually, it wasn't with the San Francisco Symphony, it was members of the San Francisco Sharks. Symphony. It was on the Music of Viva Great. Uh, series, and I played tape recorder <laughs> uh, because I was associated with the San Francisco Tape Music Center. Sure. And I've done things with them, and I've done uh, electronic music kinds of things in the early days with the development of like the Bukoro sure. and the Moog synthesizer sure. type things. Uh, that oddly enough, of course, uh, it, it, it was developed... It was the beginning of It was it. at the Fillmore Auditorium. Right. What, of all places. What happened there? Well, Don Buchla used to bring in his synthesizers and I, I the dead had Sure. Some of the Buchla synthesizers that were candy apple red. You know? Right. And, and, the, and the myth was that the candy apple was impregnated with LSD and <laughs> chipped it off. And, you could eat it. <laughs> well, it was nonsense. But <laughs> so what, what about, what year was that about that they did that at the time? That was in the, that was in the, really the beginning. Okay, early That's 70. when during the time when Chet Helms and Bill Graham were alternating. Avalon, Fillmore, Avalon, Well, Fillmore. no, it was not Avalon, Fillmore. It was Fillmore, Fillmore. But one week it was Chet Helms, and the next week it was, it was Bill. At the Fillmore. At the Fillmore. Fillmore. Yeah, and Bill... It had to be before they signed the contract, so Bill had signed the contracts. Right. Late 65. Exactly. <laughs> to rent it permanently. But permanently rent In the year before played with a, lot, a few different promoters. Right, and, and he was doing benefits for the main troops. Right, uh, at the uh, Howard Street Loft. Yes. Yeah, and, and then he was, then it went down there. Exactly. To the, to the film room, the film exactly. room, and there was also the Trips Festival. Exactly. Which is where we got involved with, with the Google machines and so on. But getting... So that, that was pre-65. That was? Well, it had to be... Yeah, okay. When was it? It had to be 65, 64. Um, yeah. Because Bill signed late in 65. Yes. But the airplane show was the first show of his own. Right. Yes. So that's really early. And about that time, he was also doing the benefits for the Mind Troop. And right. The, and it was the airplane. <laughs> I know one, the first one that I did with Bill was the airplane. Um, the... Quicksilver Messenger Service, and the Gentleman's Band. 
Sounds right. Sounds right. <laughs> it was the gentleman's band, and it was a black rhythm and blues band. Uh huh. Local. And then after that, they hardly ever showed up. Every song, okay. Bill had a habit of taking different styles of music and putting yeah. them on the same bill. Yeah. yeah. You know? um, so, uh, what is your favorite kind of music to play? Usually what I'm playing at the moment. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, my favorite kind of music to play is music where the other players, I like I like ensemble. Yes, like work with other musicians. And other musicians care about what they're doing. That's all I care about. If they care about what they're doing enough to do very highest quality of performance, I love it. Right. You know, it doesn't matter what it is. It enables you to go right. as the drummer. And it's I, I, I played with klezmer bands. Yeah. I played with country and western, and uh, I played with. What are some of the people? Have you played with anybody through the very beginnings that um, that we would know their name? Well, when I was working for San Francisco Tate Music Center, there was another um, uh, technician, engineer guy by the name of. Uh, uh, Peter the Blanc. <laughs> and Peter had a girlfriend by the name of Janice. Mm -hmm. And she used to come by and sing a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that's where I met Janice Joplin. Mm -hmm. Peter could play blues in the key of C on the piano. That was about it. <laughs> but Janice was, Good, wow. Janice was wonderful. Janice. What was your impression when you first heard her voice when she came in? This is pre Big Brother, right? Uh, right about just, so well, barely. actually, this was, Janice kind of got a little spacey and went back to Texas. Right. And it was before that. Right. So she... Jen had brought her out. Yeah. Here. Yeah, and she went back to Texas, got straightened out, and came back out, and then that's when the Big Brother thing hit. And, right. And, and that's when, you know, I know. She's just yeah. playing from, singing from the heart. No oh, yeah. she, she was wonderful. Did. She was amazing. Uh, it was just, she's the only, she could, I swear she could sing two notes at once. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she really couldn't sing two notes at once. Exactly. And, uh, you know, she's, uh, first time I ever heard her you know, do that. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, that, that must, that's a wonderful experience. Right. Right. And she almost does that in uh, Take a Little Piece of My Heart. Right. Know, and, and, uh, right. Uh, you know, I, in the old days, I worked with a lot of guys, like, like uh, with, with jazz. When I played jazz, sure. I worked with, with um, Wendy Monroe. Uh, I played with Norma Teagarden, and Jack Teagarden's sister for years. And with Burt Bales, who was a piano player for the long time. Sure. And uh, actually, um, uh, I wish I could have, I should have made a list. <laughs> it's okay, we can add to this, you know, yeah, okay. yeah, add to this. Um, there's a lot of times somebody says, we don't have a drummer, can you come and help play for the night? Or, yeah. It doesn't have, yeah, it's not Well, like, that happened, Lightning Hopkins. Lightning Hopkins, sure. I was playing with a, with a traditional jazz group over uh, in Berkeley. Sure. At, uh, I don't know what the heck the name of the place was, but... Uh, in, That's fine. Uh, it was way before the Freight and Salvage. And... Lightning was also on the bill with us, and uh, his drummer didn't show. Up. So he said, "Can you? Can you somehow can you do, do it?" it? You know, I said, yeah, I'll do it. So, because I'd heard a lot of his recordings, and I played with, so I played. I stuck him like blue, boy. I tell you, he'd phrase blues like you know, it's usually twelve bars, but he'd phrase thirteen, nine, eleven. Amazing. <laughs> you know, he'd speed up, he'd stop and slow down. I stuck in just like blue boy. I didn't keep going. <laughs> well, that's why you're okay. here. Okay. <laughs> then he says to me, he says, hey, man, he says, you're, you're, you're a little too tight. He says, you got to loosen up a little bit. got to loosen up. got to loosen up. Here. You know, he shoves this gallon of wine in my <laughs> Make a slug of that. And, you know, so I hit that. Yeah, I have another one, you know. <laughs> get loose, man. Get loose. Get loose. The second... <laughs> so we did 
I was. Yeah. You beat me to the end of the tune every time, man. You turned to laugh like hell, dude. It was, hey! <laughs> hey. <laughs> Got That's you again. <laughs> You That's was amazing. Yeah. Um, I know you put some other music. I would love to hear something else you brought. Maybe yeah. tell us a little about it as you're putting it in the machine. Okay. Um, this particular tape I did and uh, at 321 The Visadero. I hope I've got it queued, I've got it queued up right now. I'm uh, getting it in the machine. Uh, it's called Flight Suite. And I did it the night that the first Buchla machine ah. was delivered in 1965, early 65. And I was, this thing was wonderful. Right. I could do things with it that, we, that would take us Forever. months yeah. to do. Cutting tape, splicing, doing all that stuff. And we could just do it. Just do it. Thing. And so, so you're playing on here. Is there anybody else on the tape beside yourself? Or no, it's totally just, you. Okay. I'm just running the machine. I pro you could program this thing. Okay, let's see how much time we have to do see this. If I can, see if I can get. Probably, I probably got it wrong. I do. That's all right. <laughs> no problem. So, no problem. So this and the this machine was a very new machine, and I I remember that. And it wasn't uh, even complete. Right, so here's here's a very early tape using yeah. this technology. But well, I am playing the keyboard as well. Perspective of the San Francisco State Music Center people at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, in Detroit, New York, and uh, we didn't do this piece, but sure. but it was the same group, sure, uh, with Morton Sabotnik, um, Anthony Martin, uh, Ramon Sender, uh, Pauli Oliveros, and me, and um, we really had a lot of fun. We did an old piece, and then we did it. Well, it's the pioneer days of this type of technology. Yep, is it really is. way has developed now in 2005. It's yeah. actually the transition period between how the avant-garde electronic music was done, say, with people like Stockhausen mm -hmm. and Boulez, and had, had, sure. had done this stuff sure, before, sure. and John Cage. Sure. Uh, and of course, Cage worked with us too. You know, he was there. He did concerts at the Sure. And uh, so that was it. Was quite a time. You know, it's amazing. This transition between. It's amazing. You know. Uh, when, of course, Cage. You know, predicted it. He said people will make music using film, using you know the the, the sound strip on a film. Sure. Uh, did now they do it through computers. Yeah. But he didn't know about tape. Right. Because tape hadn't been invented yet. Right. And along came tape and said, oh, that's it. That's what we use because it's so easy to cut and splice. Totally. I want to I wanna talk a little bit about, um, you can either make this lower or we can put the other one back on. No, it's okay. <coughs> um, I want to talk a little bit about the Haight Ashbury. And, yeah, and that's what this is supposed to be about. Well, it's all about it. <laughs> and it leads into it. Um, uh, when you were in that Haight-Ashbury, um, I heard you used to do, rehearse at the Straight Theater, yes. and uh, 
Can you tell me a little bit about, have you ever played at the Strait or play, or been at any of the any of the Golden Gate Park events or? Well, I was there um, at the Golden Gate Park events, but um, you tended them around. one or two, yeah. So you've like, seen the magnitude I, I, of people that came oh, yeah. around everywhere. But, but we, I actually didn't play at the Strait Theater. I, Rehearsed there. We rehearsed there all the time. Yeah. So yeah. how how did that work out? Uh, how many people did you rehearse with? Uh, and which band was, was that? That was that was a band that that uh, never got a name. Right. <laughs> it was kind of a no name band. The hardest part of it is naming a band, you know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but it was Greg. The guy's name was Greg Hodel, and he was putting this band together. He had a girlfriend that was a singer, who had been. Miss California, or, or right, right. To Miss California from Monterey or something. Too beautiful. But the uh, the Strait Theater that let you come in with other bands were uh, rehearsed there well, another time. There wasn't time? anything happening there. during the daytime. And during the daytime, and so I said, "Yeah, come in with us." Do you remember who it is you spoke to at the Well, it was what, Reggie. Reggie, and, right, one of the founders. He was he was there, and and um, there was uh, what's his name uh, Alal. Uh, uh, Hillel, Hillel, Re uh, Hillel Reznor. Um, yeah, right. But Spike, was, Spike Luther, was there later on. And Luther Green. Luther Green, yeah. Exactly. And um, uh, but I knew Spike from the tape center because he used right. to work with Anthony Martin uh, at the tape center. So um, and then who was it? What was his name? Was it a tech guy uh -huh. that was at. Um, at the Strait Theater, I can't think of it. Oh, the tech guy. Yeah. Um, I don't know, we've done some interviews with people from Danger the Strait. Dangerfield? Yes, it is, Dangerfield. Dangerfield, was it? Is it, yeah. is it uh, with a B? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, Dangerfield was his name, and he was, he did all the, uh, the electric on it, the audio mixing, right. and all yes. this kind of stuff. He was, the, he yes. was a tech guy. Yes. So what are you doing now in your life? Are you, uh, where are you living now? I'm living in San Francisco. I'm playing mostly jazz and doing uh -huh. a lot of, of uh, uh, jazz festivals. Sure, we mostly are, jazz festivals. Where where um, where do these take place? Outdoors, well, indoors. At the end of the month, we're doing the San Francisco or the uh, Sacramento Jazz Jubilee. Which what is, what is your band called now? It's called Golden Gate Rhythm Machine. Correct. Right. And um, and I'm working with several other bands too. Several other name of you. Uh, the Apollo Jazz Group, which plays at Jelly's once a month uh, sure. on Saturdays, and uh, any other band? Yeah, uh, uh, Bob Schultz's Frisco Jazz Band once in a while, uh, Magnolia Jazz Band, and then uh, anybody else who happens to call sure. on the phone. <laughs> you have a website that we can learn more about. Uh, yeah, the um, uh, the website that we have. For Golden Gate Rhythm Machine? For, for you? Yeah, well, I don't have a personal. Okay, for Golden Gate But you could Machine. Google me and I'll come up. Sure, beautiful. Uh, but if someone is watching this tape and they want to learn more about you okay, they go and your to band, where would they go? www.santhony, it's one word, dot com uh, slash ggrm. I think that's probably backslash. No, Either way, try both. <laughs> <laughs> try both. Why but if you looked up William McGinnis or Bill McGinnis, if you just go uh, look up Bill McGinnis, uh, you'll probably get me and my father. That's right. He okay, was okay. who was a revolutionary in a way in the state of Jefferson. No, I think he's 19, amazing coming 1941. from 1941. Coming from that kind of uh, yeah. a background, and uh, <laughs> well, I just, I just, I'm so pleased that you came today. We got a little piece of history. Uh, that we didn't have, and we have to learn more about you, and um, you being part of the scene contributed to this whole period, um, and sh sharing with us some of the technology of music and development. It's just clear to me how so many people made the 60s and the Haight-Ashbury, and the family stayed there, and they grew further and further, um, and uh, um, the only way to inspire people in the future when they see this is by watching other people's lives and be inspired by what they've done. So I want to thank you. My name is Rebecca Nichols. I'm the moderator and I'd love to thank you for this interview. We will be calling you back and we will 
we will document some more things. Okay. Um, and just want to tell you, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing, sharing your life. Okay.